Okay, so yes, Amy told us we're supposed to tell you what we do. So that's what I do. Um, my ministry, or whatever you want to call it, it's called Torah Family Living, and it is the stuff I have created for me, and I share it with all of you. Uh, so some of the things I do, I don't remember. I don't remember what I wrote. I wrote some parenting books that are from the trenches of my life as a mom, and I have homeschool resources. I also have the Torah Family Living Planner that some of you use. Um, that is, again, what I created because I needed a planner because I, I, I needed a planner. Um, I also have lots of resources to help you get in the Word, which is what I'm going to talk about today, is being intentional about Bible study. Uh, so that's some of the things that I have, and I also have a website because I know there's a lot of stuff on my table. There's a lot more on the website, so just take your time, explore. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about being intentional about Bible study. Uh, I'm going to talk about mindset first, because we are intentional about what we value, because... For example, a lot of the things we just talked about with habits, if I value a brownie, I'm going to do what it takes to get the brownie, right? So we are, we, if we value something, it's not about making time for it. It's not about putting it on a to-do list. It's going to happen because it's important to us. So the first thing I want to do is talk about why Bible study should be important to us, because it should. So uh, we'll get to some practical stuff in a few minutes, but first we're going to change our mindset. Uh, so we want to start in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. I think my, some of my verses might be a little different, but that's okay because I think there's value in different translations anyway. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And when I first uh, looked at this passage, I see like an equation with little arrows, okay? So in comes word of God, and we hear it, and out comes faith is basically what we're looking at, okay? So if we want faith, the other end of the equation, we have to be putting in word of God, okay? You can't have faith without putting in this first, okay? And the Bible makes it pretty clear. There's lots more passages. We're going to be looking at a couple that, first of all, if we want more faith, again, we need more word of God. You can't expect this to be sitting on a bookcase and then struggle with your faith and wonder what's going on. The answer is right here. You need more of this, okay? Now, we live in a really noisy, really noisy world. Am I right? <laughs> and it has a lot of voices, and most of them are either useless or downright dangerous. So what we're going to talk about today is we need to mute all those other voices, and we need to turn up the volume on this, okay? Now, I was looking at if we, if we put in the Word of God and we get faith out, so let's talk a little bit about faith, okay? We know that it uh, has a lot to do with, okay, we're believing the right things, we're, we're, oh, we have faith in God, whatever that may be, but faith is not just belief, okay? We can't say, oh, I believe, therefore I have faith. Because what does James say? He says faith without works is dead. So faith requires action. And I wrote this in my notes, I wasn't sure if I'd share, but I'm going to because I think you'll all understand it. You guys have all seen the Indiana Jones movies, right? Okay, the best one, I think, is the third one with his dad. And he's going to the Holy Grail, right? And he has to solve all these puzzles. And he gets to the one where he's in front of that chasm, right? And there's nothing there. And what does he have to do? He has to step out, right? He doesn't know what's there. Faith requires for us to step out. We have to actually do something. And, and as I was, you know, praying in the middle of the night, you know, trying to prepare for this, because we do that, yes, awake at three o'clock this morning. But um, for example, I want to give you a couple examples. We may be struggling, say, with money problems. We can pray for Yah to provide for our money problems, right? We can believe that he can take care of our money problems. But that's not really faith. Faith is, I know Yah's gonna provide, but I'm gonna learn a marketable skill. 
I'm going to learn how to do something about my money problem. Because he is doing his part. He has done his part. It's our turn to do our part. Okay? Because, again, faith without works is dead. So we have to do our part. We can be praying, we can be believing that he's going to take care of things, but if we're not actually showing up and doing our part, he's like, yeah, I gave you everything you needed. Get to it, okay? Um, uh, it, an example, say, in a, in a, there's a flood. And you know the guy who's, who's in the flood, and he's up on his roof, and he's praying, God, save me from the flood. A boat comes by. He's like, no, no, God's going to save me, you know. And the helicopter comes by. No, no, God's going to save me. He drowns, you know. God says, you were going to save me. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter, okay. <laughs> so we need, to, we need to do. We need to act on our faith. Otherwise, it's not faith. It's just believing really hard. And that's, that's not what he asks us to do. So how does the word of God give us more faith? The Bible is full of instructions on how to live. Full. And uh, I've, I've been listening to people teach, and I've been doing a lot of my own studying, and it is shocking to me just how practical the Bible is and how it's like, do this and this will happen. And, and we need to get in there to find it so that we can act on our faith. Just looking up my notes here. Sometimes we do. We pray about things. And he's saying, I gave you the instructions. I gave you what you're supposed to do. So stop praying and start doing. And then, then he can show up. But we have to be doing our part. So there we go. Thank you. So the equation could look like this. Like I said, I see, I see like a little flow chart and little arrows when I read this. First, we study the word of God. And we learn about who Yah is. Um, I've been blessed in, uh, in our local Shabbat meetings. That's literally been our theme for what, like 17 lessons for <laughs> now. Literally all the attributes of Yah and who he actually is. We learn who he is. And then as we're in there, we're learning who our God is, who we have faith in. We find his instructions for living, which we're going to look at a little too. We start doing what he says. We have increased faith as a result. We act on that faith, and we do what he says. So that actually is on your handout if you want to fill in the blanks. Okay, I'm going to go to um, 2 Peter chapter 1. Go ahead and skip the, yeah, skip that slide. 2 Peter chapter 1. Now this struck me as, it was a really strong picture when I saw it. You see, we are either, in our relationship with Yah, we are either drawing closer to him, or we are literally falling away, okay? There is no, I'm just here and I'm comfortable with my relationship with him. We're either moving towards him, or we are literally moving away. And when you get that picture really in your mind, like if I'm not actively pursuing him, I am literally moving away from him. That's kind of a scary thought. You know, it really, it, to me it is. Um, there's, no, there's no idle, there's no middle, there's no I'm just here. You're either moving forward or you're falling away. And Second Peter talks about this. Again, I think mine's a little bit different, but that's okay. Uh, verse five, it says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, you're moving towards him, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yeshua, for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. So you see that you're either increasing, you're moving towards him, or you are literally falling away. Um, in, our, in our local group, um, the, the man who leads our fellowship, he's... He's really, he's really short, but he's really animated, so he makes up for it. Well, he did this, he did this little illustration. He had another man, um, he was, the, the other man was the Holy Spirit, and Gary was Gary. 
and they're walking along, so he's walking with the Holy Spirit, you know, so they're walking along, and then Gary would be like, oh look, you know, squirrel, and, and the other man who's playing the Holy Spirit, he keeps walking, and he goes like, Gary, come on, and Gary's just like, oh yeah, 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 I'll get to it, right, and he keeps walking, and he literally, he, the, the guy playing the Holy Spirit, he like threw the Bible at him, you know, take the, <laughs> he's like, oh no, no, but you see how he's back here looking at squirrels, and the Holy Spirit just kept moving, because you're either moving towards him, or you're falling away, even though he thought he was just standing still, see how the distance got really big, okay, but then once he says, oh my goodness, I need to pursue him. All of a sudden, the gap is like this, because that's how he is. Soon as we come to him, shoop, we're right there with him again, because that's when we draw near to him, he just right there, right there. He was like there all the time, but you know, we're just like, Ew. squirrel. <laughs> so uh, do, you see the, do you see the equation again? You've got faith. And then it leads to virtue and knowledge and self-control and steadfastness and godliness and brotherly affection and love. So once we get the chain going, we're building all these things into our life that we're supposed to have. What's it start with? It starts with the word of God. We have to be putting more word of God into our lives. Because otherwise, did you, did you catch that it said we're literally blind? nearsighted and blind. Yeah. All right, I want to read one more verse before I move on to the next to the next slide. It's in Proverbs chapter 1. And it's in verse 32 and 33. For the simple are killed by their turning away and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. Complacency. Again, we think we can just stay put, but we can't. We have to be constantly moving towards him. Okay, I want you to look at Psalms chapter 1. This is one of my favorite passages in scripture. Psalms chapter 1. Okay, we're all familiar with this passage. I'm going to just um, read it really quick. Um, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers, the wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. So again, his delight is in the law, and it's day and night. It's a constant bring more in, bring more in, bring more in, keep the funnel going. Um, the Bible is very agricultural. How many of you here do any kind of gardening or animals or any of that? It's a lot. You are now able to understand the Bible better. <laughs> Because there is so much agricultural language in the Bible. Um, I was talking to one of my children. And she's like, but I don't understand this or that. And I said, think farm. Think farm. You'll get it. And she went, oh my goodness, you know. Now it makes sense. So we have tried really hard to learn to eat seasonally. So we don't, we don't want to eat the tomatoes in the store that look like they're literally covered in I don't know, it's weird. They look really weird. So if we don't have a tomato that we're pulling off the plant, we don't eat tomatoes. So when we get to where we're eating tomatoes, it's like, oh my goodness, we get to have a tomato slice on our burger. It is so exciting. But we've learned to like follow the seasons with what we're eating. So right now there's like, how many eggs, how many dozens of eggs did we leave them when we left? Was it like seven or eight dozens? <laughs> <laughs> and I've and I've been putting them up too but it's like it's egg season so we're eating a ton of eggs we're trying to put them up for the winter if we if you know if the hens stop laying but we're learning we're embracing the seasons with how we eat we also need to learn to embrace the seasons of life that we're in that's a lot of, <laughs> I did not expect that <laughs> okay we'll just we'll go with that so 
with it, we're going to talk a lot about seasons today because I think it is super, super important that we understand there are seasons to um, there are seasons to our plants and our animals. There are seasons in our life. There are just there are so many seasons. Um, but let me finish this slide before I really get going. So if we're learning um, from Psalms one and we're learning, okay, we need to delight in the word, which is what we, we want our intention to be. I don't want to put it on a to-do list and say, I'm going to read my Bible. We want our heart to go, this is what I need. This is what I value. This is what I want, okay? And when we do that, not only does he increase our faith, he helps us to bear fruit in our season. Remember that tree where it would bear fruit in its season? It actually says that we're promised a prosperous life. That doesn't necessarily mean money. It means that it's gonna go well with us. It's prosperous, it's good, it's successful. He says he will give us discernment in our relationships so we can say, this is a scoffer, I need to not listen to them. This is someone who's teaching me the law. This is someone who's encouraging me. I wanna be with them. So these are things that we get as we're in the word. And it also says we simply will have, it will go well with you. I love that phrase, it will go well with you. Does that mean life is always easy? Mm. No, it's not, it's not. But he's with us and we can still put a smile on our face. We can still show up every day because that's, that's also part of faith is believing that he has a purpose for us that we need to show up every day. Even though life sometimes is hard, sometimes the season is where we have tomatoes. Sometimes the season is where we don't get tomatoes on our burger. You know, it's, I know it's simple, but it's true, that's, that's life. But if we want the fruit, if we want all of these things in our life, what do we need? We need the word, we need the word. Okay, so the, the key to being intentional about Bible study is to want more faith, more blessing, better relationships, growth, more than we want to scroll on Instagram. We need to want it more, we need to value it, we need to see if we're not going forward, we're falling away. That, oh, that scares me. That scares me. We'll go ahead to the next one. You will be intentional about what you value. You do not have to work it up. If it's important to you, it gets done, okay? All right, so now I want to get practical. All right, we're gonna talk about some tips. Okay, first, I just, I just want to say, I know you, you, you guys have been to my table and you see all my beautiful books and all oh, the copy work and all oh, the Bible study journal. I am not 100% perfect at this. I create things because I need them and it doesn't mean I'm perfectly consistent. I am, I'm trying to get better. I'm try and these things help, they're tools. Um, and actually, when, uh, when Amy asked me to do this topic, I was really humbled because here I, I post a monthly verse list and I've done it every month for four years, but I don't always even keep up with it myself. Um, but I, I, let me see, do I even have it on me? See, oh, here it is, here it is. What is it, the 14th of May? Yeah, I'm four days behind, so there you go, this is real. I was, I was very humble. But you know who was always perfectly faithful about my monthly copy work? My mother. She was so perfect about this. Literally, um, she, she, I don't think she missed a day. I don't think she missed a day. She would call me at the end of the month and say, do you have the next list ready? And I go, no. <laughs> she was a very good example. I, I'm, I'm very, very proud of my mother. But um, yeah, she did it perfectly. I'm, I'm not so perfect, I'm sure you all aren't perfect, but that's, we're pursuing. We're, we're pursuing. We're just, we're always wanting to move forward. Always wanting to move towards him. <clears throat> go to the next side. There we go, perfect. Okay, life has seasons and it has ebbs and flows. Just like my tomato plants, just like my chickens, life has seasons. Some of you are in a different season than me because you got the, oh, the beautiful bellies, you got the little babies, oh, I love it. I am not in that season anymore. My youngest just turned 10. That's a season. 
You know, I have teenagers, which is super cool. I have adult children. That's a season. You know, my, my mother-in-law is here. That's a different season. She's a grandma. It's a, it's a whole, different, whole different thing. We need to learn to embrace the season we're in. We don't go out in swimsuits in December. We embrace the season we're in. So we're going to talk about how our Bible study needs to fit also with the season we're in. And recently, I actually was listening to someone who was talking about, in the business world, men tend to have this 24-hour, you know, I work from nine to this, I do this, I do this. We have not a 24-hour cycle, we have like a 28-day cycle, right? But do we ever actually appreciate that and plan for that in our life? You know, I actually was, she's like, track how you feel on each day of your cycle. And I, I started doing that, and I'm like, oh my goodness, she's right, you know? Um, if you actually pay attention, we were made differently than men. We have different seasons than men, and we need to embrace that. We need to learn to work with it instead of trying to make ourselves, like, always the same, straight line, you know, 24 hours, every day is the same. We're not like that. We're not like that, and our Bible study is not going to be like that either. Because we have, we have high mountains in our life, and we have valleys. I know I've been, I've been through some valleys lately. I don't know about you, but we don't, we're not always on top of the mountain, everything going great, and we also aren't always in the valley. We aren't, and I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. So there's times where we're going to be in the Word a lot, and it's going to be like, we won't even think about, I just read it for two hours. It's, it's not even going to be a thing. But there's times where we're going to really feel spiritual because we walked in the kitchen and read the verse we posted on the fridge and be like, I am so awesome. <laughs> right? It's the season. It's the season we're in. So it's, re, it's, it's seasons, it's relationship, and we need to learn to just we need to flow with that. We need to be realistic with ourselves that we are not going to always sit and do this huge book study, you know, or, but sometimes we will. It's just this season and, and it's not, it's, it's where we are, say, in our, in our journey as a woman. It's what's happening to us, you know, what we're dealing with at the time, and we need to take all that into account. And it's all about relationship, too. I know I had that slide. I think I put it, like, way back at the beginning, but it's all good. It's all good. So I, I got my husband's permission to, to use mar our marriage as a little bit of a, an illustration because marriage is compared to our relationship with Yeshua. He's called the bridegroom. We're called the bride. So just like, just like um, our marriage has seasons, and it's a relationship that's changing and evolving, um, so is our relationship with Yeshua. Um, some days in your marriage, you're all flirty, you know, you're dancing 80s music, it's all good, right? And then the next day, you're just like, I am so irritated with him. Oh, he wants to go to bed because I cannot deal with him another second, right? But even on those days, because it's a relationship that matters, you still, you know, reach your foot over under the blanket and just touch him. Just, it's, we're, we're, we're still okay. I'm sick of you right now, but I'll touch my toe over there and it's. <laughs> so again, it's, it, it changes, it flows, and it's okay to go with that. So we're gonna talk about, can we go to the, it says mountaintops on it? We're gonna talk about mountaintop and Valley Bible study, because there's different things that are appropriate at different times. Okay, so the first mountaintop study is to actually study an entire book. How many of you have actually done an entire book study? Anybody? All right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's, that, that is awesome. Um, Okay, so if you're going to do an entire book study, I just wanted to break down some things that I found because I've done little ones and I did a little, you know, I took a few college courses, but this is something I'd like to do better at. So it was recommended <clears throat> to start by reading it several times through so that you really know the content, okay? It's a good idea to create outlines to help you break it down. And those outlines can include the context of who, when, what, where, 
why, how, all of that. So uh, on, your, on the back of your handout, you can write down the things that you would like to work on, the ideas, okay? Um, you wanna go through and define words, check context, setting. Again, you're looking at who wrote it, who they write it to, what was going on, that type of thing. And one of my favorite things to look at whenever I'm doing any kind of Bible study is cross-references. I love to see how this passage is connected to this one. We call ourselves whole Bible believers because it's all the same story. How many of you have seen that graphic that goes around on social media um, periodically where it looks like a rainbow, where it's like this is Genesis is connected over here to this and it's just whoosh, whoosh, I think that's fascinating because it's all connected. It's all connected. So cross-references are excellent for you to look for. You should always be looking for cross-references. Okay, the next one, the next idea, and this is, again, this is when you can do more. You know, this is not when you have a newborn. This is not when people in your family are sick. You know, this is not when you're in your cycle at that point where you're just like, I just wanna take a nap and don't talk to me. Okay, that's, that's not necessarily Again, fit it to where the season you're in. The next one is to work on a challenge. How many of you have actually read through the Bible in a year? Wow, good job, good job. That's a good one, that's a good challenge. Uh, another challenge could be to do a topical study where you're like, I'm gonna look at all the things that are talking about prayer, um, something like that, and you're going through and finding the passages. Those are a good thing to do. Um, also joining like a group study where you're working together through something, a study. So that's a good challenge to work on. Again, this is not necessarily appropriate for all seasons, but it's a good thing to do. Okay, the next one is to develop a note-taking system. And I want to, I want to credit Tara in the back for inspiring me, thank you. Because I was, I was raised afraid to write in my Bible. How many of you, how many of you are kind of there? Couple of you, yes, I was raised like, don't write in the book, okay? And, and she, she actually did a video and she was talking about her, just her journey into, I'm gonna start writing in my Bible because I want to engage with it. I want to really, it's, this is relationship, so if, I'm, if he is speaking to me, I wanna write it down, I want to learn, I want to engage with it. That's part of why I tell people to copy scripture, because you're, you're doing more than just How many of you can like read a whole chapter and your brain was reading the words while you were completely thinking about something else, you get to the end and you go. Yeah, I, I've, I've done that. When you, when you do something else besides just reading it, it keeps you engaged, it keeps you engaged. So I started learning some note-taking things to help me just interact with it more instead of just, okay, I'm just reading it. And it's been fascinating, so let me just get a swig here and I'll share some with you. Okay. So first is to write in your margins. And I think, did I give an example on the next slide? Okay, so in this one, it's in Ephesians 1 and 2. There's a whole bunch of descriptions of who we are as believers. So that's a list, right? That's a whole bunch of related things. So what I did there is I made a whole list. I highlighted and made a list of all the ways we're described as believers. So that's an, a, a good way to like, okay, now I can see the whole thing and organize it in the margin. So you can see I did. I just I wrote my identity up the top and then everyone I found, I wrote it down in the margin. And, and I highlighted it there. So that's um, right in your margins. And if you can't fit it in your margins, there are Bibles that have more space. So I strongly encourage you to get, your, get yourself a Bible with more space so you can write in the margins. The, the next thing I did, there we go, is I, I started highlighting, and this has been super cool. So I'm gonna show you what I started doing, and you can totally do your own thing, and I highly recommend you do, because it's kind of a personal thing. Um, I started with just a few. I have one for commands. So anytime it says do this, I put it in this color. And then I have one that's yellow. And this is, I wrote warning. It's like, do not do this. Anytime it says do not, you know, put that in yellow, so it's like, don't do that. And I have one that's for promises. So when he says, when you do this, this will happen, I put it in this color. And if you guys, if you guys were interested, you can come ask me later and you can copy these down. Um, I have a blue one. This is attributes of Yah. 
So anytime it says, I am Yahoo, this is me, this is me. <laughs> That's this color, and the blue kind of, I don't know, it seems kind of tabernacle blue to me. But. And then this one here, which is what I used in the, in the previous passage, is um, my identity. Anytime he describes who we are, that goes in this color. And then I have the kingdom. Anytime the... I don't think we realize just how many times it's in there that we're supposed to be bringing in the kingdom with how we live. So that's a, I think that's an important color. Now this one has kind of evolved. It says business because it's kind of important to me that I run my business the way Yah wants me to. But it's kind of become just you do this and, and it's a good thing. It's gonna, you're going to have a good life. It's kind of been one of those like blessed is the man kind of things and the practical stuff. So that's my green one. And then I recently added because I kept running into, I need to highlight that, but I don't have a color. The Messiah. Anytime Yeshua is referenced, I think that's important that we see that he's all through scripture. So he gets his own color too. So I wanted to show you what I did up here. So I'm going to actually turn to it so I can see what I did. That's Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 3. Okay, so the first one it says, no, it's not Proverbs chapter 3. What is it? It's, it is. I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 4. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, Proverbs chapter 3, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. So I could have put yellow there, but you know, it's all good because I'm just, it's, it's, don't worry about it. So let your heart keep my commandments. So that's something, that's a command. We are to keep, our, keep his commandments. And then it says, for length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. See how that's a promise? He's saying, you do this, this will happen. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. So my brain was turned on there. So that one is in yellow there, because that's a, don't let that happen, okay? And then it says, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Again, that's a command. That's a command. And then it says, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. So that one was green for Basically, like, this is, you want it to go well with you. This is, this is what you need to do. So you can create your own system, but I strongly recommend you consider figuring out a way to do something like this because I find that even the process of looking at the verses and trying to sort them and figure it out, you're, you're seeing things like, oh, there's a, there's a bad thing in there in this list that I wouldn't have even seen if I didn't go, oh, wait a minute, that's supposed to be yellow. So it's just a really good way to just engage more with what you're doing, with what you're studying. And, um, God, I'm getting all out of breath. I'm just, um, we were, I've been talking to some of you. I see, um, be warned, I see you like on a bench with your Bible. I'm coming for you, okay? Because I've been learning from all of you, and it's exciting because some of you have been doing this a lot longer than me, and you probably should have been up here, but it's all good. We're learning together. Um, you guys have, like, oh, it's so crowded, and there's so many things, and then one of you is actually, they'll get a new Bible, and they'll transfer the good stuff into the new one, you know, and I actually, I actually, um, I have a little bit of a suggestion that might help with that. How many of you have heard of Jonathan Edwards? He was a preacher, sinners in the hands of an angry God. Okay. He had a miscellany notebook. I think that might be on the previous two slides, so you guys can write that down. There. Use a miscellany notebook. And what that is, we'll just use this for an example. He would keep a notebook with his Bible, and this would be, say, notebook B, okay? And here's where he would actually keep his notes. So he would be, say, looking at a passage, and he's like, oh, I want to write all of this about keeping the commands in this passage. And so he would get out his notebook, and he'd write B-1, and he'd write all this stuff in there, and then in the Bible, next to that passage, he would write B-1, Okay, so what he did is he created like a coding system so he could have all these long notes that were permanent, but he didn't have to fill up his whole Bible with it. So if you like to write a lot, you might want to consider, and just look it up, look it up online, a miscellany notebook, and you can learn more about how that works. I thought that was a really cool idea if you want to write a lot, okay? All right, so let's go to the next one. We're going to talk about valley valley study now. This is, this is when you can't do as much, but you still want to be pursuing. 
you still want to be doing something, okay? So these are a little bit quicker, easier things. And the first thing is you really want to keep your goals attainable and doable, okay? If you're nursing a baby, it is not attainable and doable to expect to read 10 chapters a day. Well, unless you do that while you're nursing, I take it back. Because <laughs> what else is there to do, right? So keep it, keep it, again, fitting to the season that you're in, okay? So it's better to aim really low and be consistent than to aim really high and never show up, okay? So, and in fact, I think, I think previously what Katie was saying, it's, um, it, it's the little things every day, not the big glamorous stuff. So it's better to read the verse on the fridge every day than go, well, gee, I didn't study a whole book today. I'm just... Okay, so it's, it's keep it attainable, keep it reasonable, and then you can show up every day to keep in the words, to keep active, keep pursuing. Okay, the next one is to use a monthly verse list, and I happen to know someone <laughs> who has monthly verse lists. And these are free on my website. I post them near the end of every month for the next month. You can print them off, and they are themed. And uh, what is it, my, my big sister, she, I see it says May Verses. She says, I make it a game. I don't look to see, I don't read your little blurb. I see if I can figure out what your theme is just by, it's pretty cool, yeah. So, I mean, I tell you what the theme is, but you can just like, and she tries to guess, which I think is really fun. So, so you can use those, and it's like three or four verses a day, okay? You can read them. You can copy them, which I strongly recommend you have a journal or something that you just copy them. And Holly, how long would you say that takes you? Like 10, minutes. 10 minutes. She brings her notebook and her Bible up every morning. She drinks her coffee. She copies her verses. But, th but they're consistent every day because it's very manageable. So this is a really good thing. Strongly recommend it. Okay, another one, okay, is to create a prayer Bible. So this is my prayer Bible. See all, the, see all the tabs on it? There's a whole lot of them. I don't even know how many. But what a prayer Bible is, is it's broken down into categories like wisdom or praise or guidance or repentance or healing, things that you would want to pray about. And I have, prayer has been kind of a struggle for me throughout my life. I came from a Baptist church and prayer meetings where you had two kinds of prayers. You either had you know, the these and the thous and the really big words that they prayed the same prayer every time because they'd memorized all the flowery phrases. Or you had the grocery list. You know, bless so-and-so and help so-and-so. And, -so and, and that's all I really saw prayer being. And so I've, I've tried, it's been a journey, but this has been a tool that has really helped me because what we're doing is we're marking verses so when we're praying for these things, we're praying his promises, saying, you said this. And I think that's a really powerful thing to do. For example, let me see if I can find one that's, it's this one I wanted to show you. Say I want to pray for my husband, and I can go to a men tab. Yeah. And I can say, yeah, help my husband to be strong and courageous. Help him to be careful to obey the law of Moses. Uh, help him to not turn from it. Help him to be successful today in whatever he undertakes. It's right here in Joshua. Okay, so it's a really powerful tool you can use. And this is something that you can, and I strongly recommend, you build it one tab at a time, which means you're in your Bible, you color, you use a colored pencil, you mark it, and even if you only did one verse and started praying that, it's a little attainable thing, but it's so powerful, even in a valley season. Okay, so... This is a really cool thing. Even if you don't come and get my kit, there's ways you can do it yourself, but it's just, it's a really cool thing. Uh, I saw someone do, do one on YouTube, and I'm like, that's, that's a powerful, powerful tool. So, all right, let me see where I'm at. What's the next one? Read a passage on repeat. Okay, so maybe you want to do something a little deeper, so study the same passage for several days, okay? So the first day, you may look up some of the words that you don't know. The second day, you may rewrite it in your own words so it makes sense to you. The third day, you might want to write a few thoughts on how you need to put it into uh, practice, 
okay? So you're visiting the same passage over and over. You're doing deeper study, but because you put it over a few days, it's still very manageable, okay? And then the last one, put verses in your home. And that we know is in Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter six. I always get that, is it six or four? <laughs> Deuteronomy, I'm gonna read it because it's just such a good passage. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Now these pictures, these are my sister's house. I said, please take pictures of your verses. So she sent these to me. These were painted for her by a friend when they first moved into the house. And they are, it's um, Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I believe. So that's wrapping around her living room. So, I mean, that's really super artistic. You don't have to be that fancy. But post scripture in your home, okay? Um, my mom actually, you know, we didn't have fancy mezuzahs to hang on the door. So she would, she would put verses and laminate it like a bookmark. We'd stick that on our door frame. You know, put it on your fridge, put it on your bathroom mirror, put it where you're sitting on the toilet and you see it. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> Fill your home with scripture. And, it, and like I said, it, this is, I think it's beautiful, but you don't, you don't have to do that much, but you can do something, you know. I, there's, there's laminated bookmarks at another, you know, that woman's table. You can put them on your doorpost. So that you're just, you're surrounded. You're surrounded, you're immersed with his word. Because we put that in, out comes faith. And all the things that go with it, and that's what we want. That's who we want to be. That's why we're here, to learn how to do that. Well, it starts right there, in this book. Okay, I think there's one more. How can I be intentional about Bible study? First of all, have a plan. That's why I want you to Pick a couple things you went, oh, that's a really good idea, maybe, and, and tailor it to the season you're in. Maybe you're in a very, very busy or low season. Pick a couple of my valley ideas. If you're like, yeah, I got this, I've got time, I can do this, pick some mountaintop stuff. But have a plan. Be realistic with your plan. Do not expect to do mountain stuff in the valley. Just just don't, because the idea is to build relationship, to constantly pursue, to show up every day. Focus on relationship. This is not just I'm learning facts. This is not, oh, it's a history book. This is our father and what he wrote to us. And the more we know him and what he said, the closer we are to him. It's relationship, so treat it that way. It's like a letter he wrote to us. You know, I have just a few, my husband is not like a letter writer, but he did write just a few little cards, you know, little sweet things. I still have them from 25 years ago because it's a letter he wrote to me and this, that's what this book is. It's a letter our father wrote to us, so let's get in there and read it. Apply what you learn because again, if it's just, I read it, but I didn't put it into practice, Faith without works is dead. You have to put it into practice. Always, always, always bring it back to how does this apply to me? How do I need to change to match what I see in his word? Keep pursuing him. Keep pursuing him. Because if we're not pursuing him, we are literally falling away. Let that sink in. Pursue him. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm gonna read that last one. If you want more faith and more spiritual growth, you have to have more of the word of God. Thank you.